Hey, Gopher fans, welcome to episode two of Gopher Roundtable presented by Affinity Plus, our new video based podcast series where Gopher student athletes host other Gopher student athletes. My name is Parker Fox, and I'm a member of our men's basketball team here at the University of Minnesota, and I will be your host for this episode and one more episode before I pass it along to our next host. I want to thank everybody for the comments and the support on episode one with Jimmy Snuggerud and Bryce Brodzinski. If you haven't watched that episode, make sure you go take a watch or take a listen as we had a lot of fun discussing basketball and hockey. Uh, two good guys, so you know we had a blast uh, on that episode. Uh, joining me here on episode two are two stars of our Gopher volleyball team. I say stars and they smile as they are stars. They should they should recognize that, realize that. Kylie Murr and Melanie Schaffmaster, thank you guys for coming on. Appreciate yeah, you have appreciate you being here. Us. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, we'll start it right away. Uh, obviously, you know, you guys are fresh off a big win on Sunday at Indiana. Um, it was a five-set marathon of a game. Um, I think one of the sets even went to the 30s, which is pretty crazy for volleyball. So, um, you know, that was a good Hoosier volleyball team, uh, pretty solid team. Kind of, Let's talk about that one. You know, after uh, the tough loss to Purdue at the PAV on Friday, how, able, how, you know, how, how were you guys able to kind of like quickly bounce back, you know, turn the page, refocus uh, for a big, uh, you know, road win on such a short, you know, turnaround? Yeah, at this point in the season, it's like every game is a new game. And like after losing that game, we just had to move on to the next because mm -hmm. we need every win we can at this point. So we were kind of like, yeah, that's not what we wanted, but how are we going to get ready for Sunday? Yeah. And that's the best IU team I've seen in a long time. So it was a really mm -hmm. good road win, especially yeah. for us. We're from Indiana, yeah. so we kind of wanted to yeah, win. Yeah, no doubt. Was there kind of like a little added kind of juice in oh, that yeah. for you guys? Oh, yeah. For sure. Uh, the IU team probably has, what, like four or five people we played club with, so yeah. we knew about four of them, I okay. think, and it was and they're very younger than us, like, so. fresh. Oh, yeah, you can't yeah. let those younger yeah, girls no, no, get no, you. Yeah. Yeah. It was a little spicy on Sunday. Was yeah. there was there any kind of message? Obviously, like, you know, you're going to have that kind of external, you know, motivation playing in your home state, but, like, was there a message after the loss at Purdue or, like, anything that you guys came together and was like, hey, we, we need this one with, you know, the whole circumstances of everything going on yeah i mean i think it could be really easy for all of us to kind of just be like really upset with the situation that we're in right now mm -hmm. or like really only kind of overwhelmed with all the negative things that's, yeah. that are going on but like it's just so important that there is still time and like we're still we're recognizing that there is time and mm -hmm. that we're making improvements and so like like i said it's not what we wanted but like we still could win a few more games and like still get into the tournament and be really scary so yeah. i think just trying to move on fast and like show up who are we going to, how are we going to respond is kind of the message that we're sending. Yeah. And, and you know, you do exactly that. Um, to recap for fans who missed Sunday's action, Indiana took the first set, but you guys bounced back quickly and pulled out a crazy second set, 32 to 30. Uh, when you're already down one set, you know, getting in that situation, just coming off a loss, you drop the first set on the road. Um, is there more of like a lock in or like a, a focus or is it more kind of just, Hey, you know, we just got to come back out for set two and, um, you know, realize we don't want to go down, you know, Oh, two. Yeah, I think for set two, set one was definitely we got really snacks. bad, really bad, <laughs> yeah. honestly. But I think, um, I mean, for the most part, it was just like, this is not us. This is not Minnesota yeah. volleyball. Yeah. This is We haven't played like this in a long time. Uh, we gave IU the credit they deserved in spaces that they played really well in in the first set, and we didn't play necessarily as well in. And then it was just kind of like, we need to forget about the first yeah. set to get on to the second set. So, Yeah, 100%. Like, it could have been a huge <laughs> moment. Of like, they came out hot, and we were not ready for that, so – kind of just like crediting them like we said like they did good things but like we can do more and letting it go because if we go down 0-2 yeah, that's a whole tough. different yeah. ball game especially so. on the road how oh, how, yeah. how hard is that you know i going from set to set kind of forgetting about the last set and realizing like you know i can't can't dwell on it can't be too excited about it we just gotta you know get on to the next is that kind of a difficult thing or you guys have been around the sport long enough where it's probably I mean, momentum is a real thing so i mean if it's good you want to keep it and you mm -hmm. want to keep it the mojo high but if you can kind of cut the mojo from the other team and like reset sure. and restart, it's huge. So it really just depends, honestly. Yeah. I think we've had a lot of practice with having <laughs> this year, especially having to do the sets. Like we lost first set and we had to win the second set. So I feel like honestly, we were pretty prepared. I mean, yeah, momentum was a thing. I think the big thing was cutting theirs before we could get ourselves figured out but Especially we on the road yeah. yeah but not worrying about the other team as much as worrying about our side yeah and you know that one went into five sets so let's talk about that fifth set you guys were able to kind of clutch it out and get the the last few points to take home the w um you know fifth set's only 15 points does that kind of make it even more nerve-wracking knowing it's you got to do it and you got to get on it quick oh yeah. yeah i mean that's when you find out what teams are made of and like mm -hmm. who's ready to play and like who's going to take care of the little stuff so, I mean, they're nerve-wracking and, like, they suck. But, like, 
It's yeah. where you find out who you are. But I think, you know, when you talk about you guys with the experience that you've had in, in college volleyball, kind of that clutch kind of momentum and, you know, at, like attitude or competitor kind of comes out. Is that something you guys see in yourself in your own game? Like, hey, fifth set, let's lock in. Like, we've been yeah, here before. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we were for not sure. losing. We were not, not losing, losing to another all, Indiana yeah. school. No. Especially in five. Like, we came so far. We, like, came back from losing that first set and, like, got momentum. And we, I was just like. No, we're not losing we this game. Lose. Yeah. So for the fans that are watching this, uh, we actually have some video that we're going to dive into. Um, so we're going to play that video now. We're actually going to start with the end of the fourth set. Um, we're going to you know, comment on it, see what you guys thought and see your guys' opinion. Obviously, you, you lived it and you watched it, uh, you know, happen live. But you're coming out of a timeout, 23-23. Uh, uh, we're going to go point by point and um, kind of talk through this process. Right. Um, so Indiana has a serve, obviously. All right, Dustin. Taylor. This kind of looks like, was it kind yeah. of set up for Taylor? Oh, was it yeah. like you guys were going to her the mm -hmm. whole way? Well, they yeah. were attacking her all game, so we knew yeah. that serve was going to her, and then it was just like, can she? Mm -hmm. They're going to fire it up. Fire it up. <laughs> fire it up. Yeah. It's so fun in volleyball. You get to celebrate every point. What are you point. thinking right now, Mel? I literally was like, don't miss your serve. I so, served yeah. pretty well the whole game, so I was literally just like, oh, God. Hit so <laughs> my question on this one, is your is that your coach, I've seen mm -hmm. this before, obviously being at games. I don't know his name. Guy coach. Eric. Eric. Okay. Yeah. Shout out Eric. Um, <laughs> he tells you where to serve. Yeah. Is that kind of thing? Cause mm -hmm. I see that he puts the clipboard over if his face. Puts, like, like a little number. number. You'd be okay. like, wow, it, they're so detailed. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, for each rotation, like where we're going to attack and why and uh -huh. who. Yeah. Cause when I play sand volleyball, I just try to get it over the net. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. But it's obviously it's big Ted's a little bit more high yeah. level than my sand volleyball. So, uh, obviously Melanie's going to have the serve here as we, as we roll it. So I was supposed to serve it down the line, and I did it. Um, <laughs> down the right so line? So the whole night we've been serving number three. And so I just – I told Eric after I think the second set, and I looked at Kylie, and I was like, wow, she's really, like, passing every single ball yeah, I serve her. Yeah, I <laughs> And I was like, okay, like, I'm not I'm not going to. So I just did a little – That's when you decided you wanted I to I did do a that? little, like, down the line, like, no looky, and just – Wow. And it went in. Yeah, like, there you go. It's yeah. Perfect. That you I literally told you I wasn't going to serve her. Is there nerves? Is there like shaking when you're about to serve that one? Or is it more like, yes. hey, I've done this oh, yeah. thought? No. Okay. Yeah, yeah, easy no. yes. Easy yes. Okay. Yeah, no. All right, we're into the fifth <laughs> set now. Obviously, the nerves were the nerves were there, but you got the serve in. Hit of the fifth set. 11-11. Yep. Um, big, big moment right here. Yeah. I need to win this one. Outside, All right. right side. Big block yeah. at the net. Yeah. See me? Go wide. Outside. Another Huge. big block. Huge That's block. That. Who was right that, Lydia? That's when I knew we were going to win the game. Who blocked that one, Lydia? Phoebe. Phoebe? Okay. Phoebe See you, Phoebe. So that's Lauren. a moment. You yeah. knew it? I, I mean, I had a good feeling. That gave us a lot of momentum. And now the hitters are well, scared. You could, tell, you could yeah. tell, like, the whole front row was locked in. Yeah, I'm not they saying they weren't locked in, but mm -hmm. it was extra. And hopefully, like, when a hitter gets blocked like that, they're probably going to tip or yeah, do something different. timid yeah, like tip. that. But okay. Well and then you worse. get a lucky one. Yeah. yeah, you get a lucky one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then I think there was a timeout here. Or, yeah, there's timeout. Timeout. Um, twelve twelve in the fifth set. Um, is there a message in the huddle? Obviously, Kylie says that she knew we were gonna win, so she's confident. But uh, I was confident, but I just kept telling everybody to work hard, like keep working harder because it's not done yet. But like, when it comes down to this, and each team has each other's numbers, like it was a pretty yeah. fair matchup the whole game. It's like who's gonna come down, who's gonna work harder in the end. And so I just kept telling everybody to keep working hard and and it paid off so yeah. and as we see indiana serve here she had been serving well she had all night serve. so i was a little nervy she had like three aces nervy. all right taylor. Pass taylor great pass yeah, Julia. Julia went off all mm -hmm. night yeah she was Honestly, great so. all game lydia like boom boom yeah. huge no. lydia coming in as a grad transfer mm -hmm. she's been huge for you guys too yeah, yeah. yeah hitting it really well it's been <laughs> an awesome addition yeah all right now can't Let's see. Okay. Yeah. Oh God. Thirteen, twelve. Yeah. Kylie's dialed. Over and in. But not yet. There we go. Oh, I was like, please put your hands up. It's going out. 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 Big out. All right. Now it's fourteen, twelve. Mm -hmm. Is this? You know, you got to go back and and serve again. We've talked about the nerves before. Are you trying to end it here? Are you trying to just make sure you get it in? Of course, you would love like how cool would that yeah, be if you got an ace. It. But at the end of the day, it's not about me. Yeah. So it's like, okay, get it in. Let's trust our defense and see what happens. Like that's not the game plan. Yeah. So. And, of, I was you made, you made, <laughs> and you made it close. Oh, really close. <laughs> <laughs> made it close. Hit the net. Big block Huge. at the net. Do we get this? Point? Yeah, we do. Block. Oh yeah. Mm. The funny thing but, about yeah, this, none of us knew she blocked knew. it on our oh, side. Oh really? We yeah. thought it was on because our side. She blocked it so well. It went under. It, like if you watch it, it's it kind of like, hard to tell too. Yeah, sometimes. And then, well, and then the IU girl that hit it cheered because she thought it was on our side. So, so everybody was like, "What?" No one yeah. was. Yeah. 
Oh, that's great. You see the super fans there. They're at all your guys' game, all of our games. Great yeah. fans. So, um, you know, obviously fun for you guys to you know go to your home state, get a win, especially in that fashion. Um, I'm sure you guys had a lot of family and friends mm -hmm. there. How fun was yeah. that to play that in front of? Well. Yeah. yeah Good, good. I'm glad. All right. As we move on from IU, uh, we still got a lot of volleyball left to play. Like, like you mentioned, um, you guys had a tough road stretch here over the last couple weeks. But now you guys close out the regular season on a four-game homestand. Uh, you got Iowa, the Ohio State University <laughs> this weekend, and then Illinois and top-ranked Nebraska next weekend. Oh, yeah. um, you know, your squad has everything in front of you, like you mentioned before. Um, you guys kind of, you hold your own fate, um, which is what, you know, competitors and athletes want. What's your what's your guys guys kind of mindset? You know, as leaders, as you know, older you know people on the team going into these last four games, knowing you know this is this is important to you guys. So, what's kind of the the mindset yeah. for the both of you? I think for me, it's we obviously have to win one more game. So we can be eligible for the tournament, but I think our group knows that we can win probably all of them the next couple of weeks. I think another thing for me is just having fun because with the added stress of like we have to try and make the tournament like yeah. we're gonna make the tournament i think trying to also enjoy it at the same time so it's not like oh my gosh all this pressure is on us for no reason because we've never been put in that situation so i think for me it's winning at least one more game hopefully all four because i think we can win all four and then yeah. having a good time at yeah the path. i agree with that i mean i want to win i have so much only so much more time in college football so it's just like as much as I want to win and I want to share as much as I can with all these girls, like I do just want to try to enjoy it and like I don't get this back. So trying to enjoy it, but also give as much as I can for the time that I have. Yeah. Left. Friday's game against Iowa and Saturday's game against Ohio State are both sold out. Um, Melanie, kind of first to you, what is it kind of like, you know, playing in the PAV, sold out environment? I've been oh to a gosh. lot of games. Uh, yeah. It gets loud in there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you've done it for your, you know, whole career. Mm -hmm. how, you know, how special is that for, you know, the support that, you know, Minnesota yeah. gives? I think it's awesome. I mean, it norm I was like, oh my gosh, like, I don't I don't realize that like our games normally aren't sold out because there's only like yeah. what a couple hundred seats that aren't filled up. So, mm -hmm. I guess it'll be a little bit louder than normal, but I feel like we just have a really good community here and it's they love watching volleyball and it's not conditional, so I think it's always a good time. I mix I had no idea it was I normally think they're sold out, so I I'm excited so for a couple like, extra. Why would they not people? be sold out? Why would people not come to our games? Yeah. And then Kylie, to kind of you as you know, transferring in from Ohio State, um, you know, coming here and playing with Melanie, like how how awesome is it to kind of see that support from you know people and you know how much does it kind of impact you know your game? Yeah, no, I love it. A growing like playing in the Big Ten for now, what five years. I always told Melanie and just everyone like the PAV was one of my favorites to play in. And a lot of a lot of gopher, I mean, a lot of volleyball players across the yeah. you know Big Ten mentioned that in media day. I remember seeing yeah. that TikTok like, where is the most fun place to say? Yeah, Everybody says the PAV. Awesome, and it's like she said, it's such a good community. It's like a bunch of people that just love volleyball, and like mm -hmm. a lot of teams you go to, it's like they hate you because you're the opposing team. And like here, honestly, like there might be a couple things said, but it's just like people that enjoy the game, and mm -hmm. I love it, and they cheer for good volleyball, and like that's what it's all about. And I, I've always loved it, so yeah. I'm excited to get to enjoy it. Yeah, fans can catch uh, next Friday's game against Iowa on Big Ten Plus, and Saturday's game against Ohio State on the Big Ten Network. Um, let's run into some couple questions here. Uh, obviously, we mentioned you guys both being from Indiana. You played club together, going way back. Um, did you ever think you'd end up playing together? You know, obviously, you go to Ohio State, and you know, did, <laughs> did you ever ever it was think so it would? Because yeah, like, we, we, we really tried, ways. really tried to coordinate it, but then yeah. we parted our ways, ways and we're like, "This is it, like no. bye." Mm -hmm. And then I got the COVID year, and I was like, "I was okay. like, Kylie, like <laughs> they needed a libero," and I was like, "She I came can't. on our visit in February." Yeah. And I was like, if you go somewhere else, I don't know if we're going to be my friend. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, like, come on. I mean, come on. That, Obviously, yeah. you got to take the visit, but like when you were on the visit, did you know, like, I'm you know, yeah. probably coming here? I knew. Yeah. And like, it was a bless <laughs> that she was here, but like, it just, other than her, mm -hmm. like outside of her, like, it fit and it was, it worked. And it's exactly kind of what I wanted for my last year. So. Yeah, I mean, and and I think, I mean, maybe it's a little different with volleyball, but for basketball at least, obviously, you know, Hugh, um, you know, steps down and, you know, Keegan comes in. And was that kind of ever a thought for you, like maybe looking somewhere else or, you know, staying here and Kylie's coming in? Like, you know, the transfer portal is a real thing now, but obviously, you know, you decided to stay and, you know, continue to where they am. Yeah, I think I had a question. I had the same question at Media Days, and I was like, I decided to come here however long ago. Like, I explored all my options mm -hmm. and – just because the coaches switch doesn't mean like everyone around. Like I like all my friends. I like yeah. the training staff. I like the support staff. I love 
Beerman. Like, I yeah. like all the things here I have going. Um, yeah. So many other things yeah, going good so you know, than, than just it, one person. Just to leave. And that's sure. something that transferred. I was just like, dude stay like right. you have so much yeah. it's so much more than just a sport it's not always greener on the other side exactly like, and that's yeah. something yeah. younger college athletes don't mm-hmm. always understand yeah. and it's like you try to tell them they're like nah nah but no, you know uh obviously you know you stayed continue where the am um we're going to talk about kind of your kind of your role you're obviously the setter on the team at six three kind of not the typical uh statue yeah. for a setter being yeah. super tall um kind of take us through your story of how that came to be because i was told you always weren't a setter or you know you oh, kind yeah. of became it somehow some way is there a story behind that i think when we were like 12 uh someone got hurt like on one of our our team i think and i had to set at nationals <laughs> which was just like there's only like two balls you run when you're like 12 yeah. and they're like straight up and down or a little bit further straight up and down like, oh, this is nothing. yeah so it's okay. like okay just get the ball off there yeah. so someone can kind of hit it um and then i just kind of stayed that role i don't know if the person that got hurt just never came back i don't remember but um and then i grew and then it was like oh yeah i'm still good at setting and then i kept growing and then it was like oh yeah she's a really tall setter and then i just kind of stayed and then we had a pretty saw like our group was the same for like mm-hmm. what four or five years yeah, i we think all were just the same <clears throat> so yeah. we stayed with like the same people was there ever a thought to like switch back to outside or be a hitter or anything or did you just love oh outside, yeah so. my sister's an outside and then uh, my what two years of when I was playing 18s, I w- we ran a six two, which is where I hit in the front row and then okay. set in the back row, just because yeah. we had Johnny Johnny Parker from Penn State. <laughs> so I mean, you kind of had to do that with her. But good deal, good deal. Um, wow. That kind of I don't know. That's that's a cool story because I think a lot of people um, like the glory of of the you know the spike and the kill and mm-hmm. um, but obviously you know you're kind of that assist person. And it's obviously gone well for you in your mm-hmm. career, but um, that selflessness is is pretty cool. Um, a couple, of, <laughs> there you go. Give her a pat on the back. Perfect. Uh, a few weeks ago, you guys um, got to play Wisconsin um, in front of 1.66 million people on Fox. Yeah. Uh, it was the largest attendance uh, audience for a volleyball game ever, uh, history. Uh, this result didn't necessarily go your way, but um, you know, kind of talk about that experience and how po- how important it is for you and you know for the game of volleyball, kind of at large. It's huge. I mean, you see new records getting broke for volleyball. I swear every month. Nebraska and it's like just so did their cool. Thing, yeah. And like this sport is just growing so much. And like with the new pro league opening in the States in January, like, I don't know. I just think it's awesome. And I think if you watch volleyball once you're hooked and I mean, I'm a little biased, but like, I think it's seriously one of the coolest. It's yeah. fast paced. It's different. And I don't know. I think it's really cool. And I just think it's going to continue to grow whether people <laughs> like it or not. <laughs> yeah, I agree. You know? Some incredible mm-hmm. athletes. And it's, you know, I, I remember we were in um, Williams Arena and I think you guys were playing Purdue. And one of the girls was like taller than me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah. and she can go up and jump and, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. spike. I'm like, this is just highly impressive. So, yeah. yeah, the game is growing. It's continued to grow. And it's super fun for especially for me personally. I love to, to watch the game. love to watch you guys play. So. All right, Melanie, as a senior, um, kind of being in a leadership position, um, you know, being here for, you know, the whole time, your whole college career, you know, you know the program well, you know what you guys, guys kind of want to do as a program. Has there been any any leaders that have kind of prepared you for that? And, you know, is there uh, a role that you find yourself in, in when it comes to leadership? Yeah, I think definitely, obviously, our club coach I was with for, what, like three or four years definitely helped me get to that spot because I definitely – got on the team when I was like 15 with a bunch of seniors and I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, I'm just here. Like, I'm not even going to play. Like, I'm just, just let me exist and like understand what's going on. Yeah. But, um, I think understanding that I don't have to be a really big, I'm not a very raw, raw kind of person. I, uh, am able to communicate, I think with a lot of people on our team. Um, so I think that, uh, is my, I guess my type of leadership is I'm able to just connect with people and talk to people while, Kylie's an energizer bunny, which is what she's really good at. I'm not good at that. But I think definitely uh, club coaches. I think Stephanie Samity was a big part of it, too. Um, She's a very calm, collective person. And I think seeing how she was able to lead without being super raw was super helpful, too. So, I mean, yeah, there's been a lot of people. Yeah, kind of by that kind of like example, Mm -hmm. you know, especially with the, you know, player like her Mm -hmm. when she was dominating, you know, in all facets. It's like. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm here. I'm here to play. Like, if yeah. you guys aren't, like, you got to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you mentioned Kylie kind of being more of a energized bunny. Um, is that kind of, you know, the element of leadership that you've kind of brought in? Is Have you always had that, you know? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm crazy. I mean, I don't <laughs> stop talking. Like, it's just who I am. Like, I love hyping people up. I love being people's biggest fans. And, mm-hmm. like, 
that's just the person I am. And so it just comes very natural on the court when I see all my friends doing all these amazing things. And, like, I can't help but want to cheer them up. And I just think also, like, as a leader, like, I don't get to kill all the balls and bake a bunch of noise and, like, score points for my team. So I have to contribute in other ways. And, like, so I just think, like, heart and, like, energy and grit is, like, contagious. If yeah. you see someone doing it, like, I hope that my teammates want to work hard yeah. when they see other people work hard. So I kind of just try to lead by that. Yeah, and I think a lot of the fans recognize it and see it. And obviously, um, you got recognized this week. Um, you're one of the two players in Big Ten history to record 2,300 career digs. Um, the only other Ooh. was also a gopher athlete, yes. gopher volleyball yeah, yeah. player. What does that mean to you? Uh, it's you and one other player <laughs> in the history. I mean, that's I mean, pretty special. Yeah, it's super cool. I literally got the text, and I the first thing I said was, who's number one? Like, <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. Like, How what, many what, do I need to get there? <laughs> like, what's going on? Um, but no. Props to her. She's amazing. And I can't even touch it. Like, it's not even possible. Yeah, it's like six. So, we, we were yeah. actually checking. It's like 600 away. We're like, yeah, okay, five games. She averages 120 <laughs> picks a set. You yeah, know, but it's super it? cool. I mean, that list is full of amazing players and just everybody else that even isn't on that list. And I don't know. I've loved this game for so long, and I will continue to love it. And I don't know. I yeah. just Oh, that's awesome. That yeah. kind of stuff doesn't go unnoticed, so. Definitely props to you. All right, stepping off the floor a little bit. Obviously, you know, you guys have known each other for a while. Um, is there anything fun you guys like to do in your free time together, maybe separate? I know you guys have going to go, go for sporting events. I've seen you at our games, oh, yeah. seen you at other games. Um, is volleyball kind of a time you lock in? It's like, you know, the outside world doesn't come in, or is it more like, you know, you're a college student, you know, live your life, that kind of deal? Is there anything fun you guys like to do? I don't know. I like to have fun, obviously. Like, you're only in college once, and, like, I love volleyball, and I, I'm very committed to my sport and my team and everything else. But mm -hmm. I think having other things outside of volleyball is important because yeah. you could just get caught up in this cycle, and it could be unhealthy at times. So, And I've found myself getting an unhealthy cycle of volleyball. Yeah. No, that burnout just, is true. Yeah, and sure. so I've had to find outlets that like provide me to have that sort of fun outside of volleyball. But that's just personally. Yeah, I think there's definitely a time and place for volleyball. I think my freshman and sophomore year, I was like, I need to watch film like 24 <laughs> seven. Like I need to watch. I'm going to get so much better from watching film for eight hours a day. But I think now ever since like COVID kind of laid off and it's like all kind of normal. I'm definitely a lot like, Oh yeah. Like we have practice today for three hours and while I'm there, I'm going to be there. And then when I'm at home with my roommates, like I'm going to be at home with my roommates. Yeah. And then, if I'm with Kylie and we're going to get breakfast or something, like I'm going to be there. So I'm just kind of, yeah, I think that's, are. I think that's key. I tell a lot of, you know, <laughs> athletes, high school people that want to be college athletes, you kind of got to be where your feet are because, you know, if you consume yourself too much, you, especially, you know, somebody like me with, you know, seven years, you know, five years, four years, it's like you, you put yeah. in so much time and effort that like that burnout is something real. Mm -hmm. So you kind of got to, you got to be where your feet are. And I think there's, there's beauty in that for sure. All right, we're going to head on to our um, segment that we introduced last episode. Uh, we call it the Slept On Shoutout. Um, this is round two of the Slept On Shoutout. So I want both of you to think of a player on your team. Um, maybe you listened to the last episode and you knew this answer and you've been thinking about it, or maybe it's just one that pops in your head. Um, but somebody that's just kind of a stud behind the scenes, puts in all the work, may not get the love, may not, you know, be out on the court, uh, but somebody that, you know, you kind of think about, they help our team uh, in some sort of way. So kind of both of I you. I want to go first. All right. No, 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 going first. Kylie's going first. Um, I'm going to shout out Skylar Gray. I think she's mm -hmm. just the hardest worker. She's always getting extra reps, and sometimes things may not always go the way she wants them to, but there's an ever doubt in my mind that she's not working hard, and without her – our team would not be the same. So, good deal. Shout out Skylar. Right. Shout out Skylar. Okay, I have a backup. So mine's gonna be uh, Chloe Ng because she is the other setter on our team. And I think if we had to put her on outside, I think she'd play outside for our, our group if that's she awesome. if that's what we needed. And um, she's always the one staying after practice to set the hitters if the hitters want extra reps. And she's there early. She goes to class. She does her job. And yeah, she's a super reliable teammate. I think. So. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you guys for coming on uh, this episode, episode two of Gopher Roundtable. I uh, just want to remind fans that you can catch Kylie and Mel in action um, this Friday on uh, play against Iowa on Big Ten Plus and Saturday against Kylie's former school, The Ohio State University on the Big Ten Network. Uh, thank you guys for coming on. Make sure you guys stay tuned for episode three. We want to thank our sponsors, Affinity Plus, and it's been Parker Fox, Kylie Murr, and Melanie Shaftmaster. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks.